all you fine folks, brothers and sisters in the Lord, turn with me in the Bible to 1 Samuel chapter number 30. First Samuel chapter number 30. I'm going to read down through here. I'll skip over a few verses. I'm going to look at David, a very, a very uh, intense part of his life. Uh, I think the thing that we, when we look at David and his life, we can... Uh, oftentimes most relate to him because uh, we go through those ups and downs of life and uh, his life is very real. He's a man uh, and uh, he has a relationship with God but he knows the rawness of life and how that the rawness of life can uh, uh, bring our relationship with God to a, a, a deeper place. So if you want to allow me this morning, I'm going to read and I'm going to talk and we're going to jump back and we're going to look at a few things. The Bible says that it came to pass uh, when David and his men were come to Zig Ziglag on the third day. They had left and uh, 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 they came back after three days. They, they had really, if you, if you would in modern terminology, they had let down their guard. And uh, they went off, they left their wives, they left their children, they went off. And uh, sometimes when our guards should be on, we find ourselves in a place of contentment and we let our guard down. And David has done this, he and his men, and uh, to his own demise, to his own un uh, misfortune, he has done that. We'll understand as we read on. The Bible says, and... Um, uh, uh, while he was uh, came back the third day, that the Malachites had invaded the south and Ziglag, and had smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captive who were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. David comes back and he finds that his children are gone. He has two wives. Uh, he finds that all the troop that is with him, their wives and their children have been carried away. Everything's burnt to the ground. His children are gone. His wives are gone. They look around and they see that uh, there are no casualties. There's no fatalities. Just everything that he owns and everything that his troop owns is, is, is gone. It's burnt. Uh, and, and, and their loved ones have been taken captive. Now, there are several things that we look at here, uh, but, but we find that this really brings David to a place where he realizes that I need restoration to my soul. Amen. Doesn't he talk about that even in the Psalms uh, where he restoreth my soul? Do you know every one of us in here are going to have times in our lives where we're going to go through the valley, where we're going to go through some times where we let down our guard, we're going to come to a place where the enemy has overtaken us, and we're going to come to a realization that I need restoration. I need God to restore me. And so here he is, and he's looking at everything that he has worked for, everything that he loves, and he sees that it's all burnt and it's gone. And the ones who is closest to him are gone away. He realizes that he needs restoration. Now let me stop here for a moment and also say this. There are going to come times in our lives where we're going to feel like we are by ourselves. Whether we just feel like it or whether we really are by ourselves, there are going to be those moments where we're going to feel like uh, we are by ourselves. And so David realized that there's no Jonathan who has my back. Thank God for godly friends. Thank God for those who are colleagues. But there are going to be times where we're not going to have the colleague. Uh, there's going to be times where our family are going to be gone. Our friends are, going to be, are not going to be there. What are we going to do? Uh, there's no uh, Samuel with a horn full of oil to anoint over top of David. David realizes that he is here alone by himself. There are those moments in life where we're all going to find that whether we really are or we 
just feel like it, we're going to feel like we're by ourselves. But the thing that we notice about David is this. That in everything being burnt, and with the realization that there's no Samuel, there's no Jonathan, my wives are God, my children are God, I eat even, they, 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 they plotted to stone David, even his own men were disappointed in David and in his leadership, but the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. There are times where every one of us just needs an encouraging word. And there may not be someone there to encourage you, but you have to get yourself by the nap of the neck, so to speak, and you have to encourage yourself in the things of God. Amen. Every one of us will be there. If you're there this morning, I want to tell you that you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You've got to find a place that when you feel all alone, that you realize that even if you are or you're just feeling that way, that all you need is God and you've got to get some time alone with God. The Bible says, and they had, uh, they had taken the women captive and, uh, who were there with, they slew not any great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Now the enemy knew something. He knew that the greatest thing for slaves and making money was let's find some women, let's find some children. So they realized that there was value here within these women and children. They could send them down to, to Egypt to be slaves. Jumping down to verse number 6, the Bible says, And David was greatly distressed. Here is, without a doubt, a very low time, one of the lowest here in David's life. He's looking at the ice of Ziglag, uh, knowing that his family and all the family uh, of his men, they were taken captive, and Ziglag being burnt, amen. And so here it is. David realizes the great distress, and the people spoke of stoning him because the soul uh, of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. Here it is. You ever been with folks, maybe it's not just you, but you're with a company of people, and everyone's feeling the pressures of life. They're feeling the distress. David gives us an example of what we need to do. The Bible says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know what that literally means? David encouraged. Let me replace that word encouraged with a word that will radiate better in your mind. And I'm not changing the word of God and helping us understand this. Because we would find that the little translation of the Hebrew means this, that David strengthens himself in the Lord. We've got to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We need to be renewed. We need to be restored. We need to be strengthened. What are the things that you need to do to strengthen yourself in God? The Bible says, and David said to Avatar, uh, the, the priest, uh, Elimelech's son, I pray you bring me the ephod. And the Bible says that Abathar uh, brought forth the ephod. And in there was the urine and the thummim. And uh, that's what they would use to find out the direction of God. So he said, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Bible says that the Lord answered him and said, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them and, uh, and without fail recover all. Uh, let me tell you something. We have got to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. There are times where we got to find our place alone with God and we got to get answers from God. God, what's the direction that you want? Listen, all of us probably
probably have wayward family members. Uh, and it can be overwhelming. Some of us can have situations in life that, that can drain our joy and rob our peace. Uh, the enemy can come against us and make situations look bigger than what they are. Amen. And war against your soul. But I want to tell you something this morning. There is a responsibility that is placed in your lap that you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. And part of that process is, God, here I am in this situation. How shall I pursue the enemy? How shall I move from here to see victory happen? You want to encourage yourself in the Lord? You want to strengthen yourself? You need to ask God, God, what do you want me to do in my life? God, what is the plan that you have for me? David came and he said, God, I, I was lax. I left I left here, Ziglag, and I left our wives and our children. I was lax. I wasn't wise. I didn't consult with you. And I come back to see that, that the Amalekites have come in and have taken our wives and children and have burned everything down. God, I've messed up. I need restoration. I need to be encouraged in you. I've made a bad choice. Listen, all of us in here, either at one time or another in our life, probably got out of the plan of God and made a choice without consulting God, and we reap the repercussions of that. What are we going to do? We're going to be like David. We say, God, I'm stressed, but I'm encouraging myself in you. I'm not down and out. God, I'm consulting you about what I should do. The Bible says, as he consulted the Lord, that the Lord said, victory is yours. You can overtake. Listen to me, every year in this building, listen to me. I will save you heartache down the road if you will listen to the word of God and follow by David's example. Are you listening? Before you ever make any decision in your life, I don't care what it is, a decision for a job, a decision that will be critical to your family, a financial decision that you'll make. Hey, listen, listen. Some folks are in financial distress because they didn't consult God with their purchases. Amen? I'm not talking about buying your candy bar or buying a loaf of bread, but I'm talking about big purchases, vehicles, homes, uh, things that are very vital in our lives. We need to consult God. God, is this your will or not? And so here is David. He consults with God, and he says, God, should I go after the enemy or should I not? What should I do? And, and, and as he went to the Lord, the Lord spoke to his heart, and he said, David, David, I'll tell you what, you are to go after the enemy. It's going to be a fight. It's not going to be a quick fight. You'll find he fights from a twilight to, to midnight. Uh, you'll find in the Word of God. It was a long fight. But David knew prior to going into battle that God had already spoken clearly to his heart. The victory is yours. Amen. Sometimes before we even go into the fight, before we even go to places, We've got to know with confidence that God has guided me to this direction. I've asked in prayer, and God did not give me a red light to stop. He did not give me a yellow light to caution me, but He gave me a green light that I must go, and that is the beginning of our victory. Amen. I'm talking about consoling God. Amen. Uh, uh, for those that are in dating age, amen. Uh, you know what? I, I throw dating out the window in court. Amen. Get some uh, goals in your heart and your mind. Amen. And then when God advances, you go there. Amen. Uh, it's not like marrying in leisure, and uh, uh, marrying in haste and repaying in leisure. It doesn't work that way. You better know it's God. When you enter into your job, you spend much of your life there. You spend uh, one, one, one third of your day there. Uh, uh, your waking hours at home may not even be as many as your waking hours at your job. You better know it's God when you enter that job. Amen. That's right. All the things that we do in life, we need to consult with God. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He consulted with God. God gave him the green light and said, the victory is yours. The victory wasn't even about Brother Craig. The victory was as he was seeking God for the dentist. And God gave him the go ahead. Victory is yours. Well, let's look at a few things 
Let me ask you a few questions. I started out talking about restoration and the importance of having restoration. I believe that as believers, there are things in our lives that we should have. Joy should be ours. And if you're plundering in joy, it's time to have restoration. Amen. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. In His presence is fullness of joy. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory, I believe, for every child of God. So if you're plundering and you don't have it, the enemy has robbed it from you. From whatever has happened in life, you've let down your guard. It's time that you seek God and say, God, I'm taking back the joy that the enemy stole from me. And if there's not peace in your heart, do you know what? God wants to reign in perfect peace. The Word of God says that you will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Amen. If you're extrapolating with peace this morning, the this morning is an opportunity for restoration. God can give you the peace that you need. If you're struggling this morning with your salvation, amen, one foot in and one foot out, I need to tell you that that, how, that foot out is what God sees and you need to get under the blood and make things right with God and be restored in the kingdom of God. Amen. If your walk with Christ isn't what it should be, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you're not living in the Spirit, amen, it's time for restoration. Amen. I I believe in Pentecost. I believe in the move of the Spirit. I believe it's time that the church is restored back to the way God wants us to be living, walking, and moving in the Spirit. If the things of God are not priority in your life, you need restoration. You need to let God have priority in every area of your life. So here it is that David realized that he needed restoration. Uh, 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 as I said, uh, the enemy, he wants to kidnap uh, 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 us in worldliness, our family in worldliness. Uh, the enemy wants to mock our worship. Amen. He wants to loot away at our peace. Uh, but it's time for restoration this morning. Amen. 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 God is a God of restoration. And God wants to restore. See, the problem all started many years ago with the Amalekites long before David. Because God spoke to King Saul. He said, Saul, I want you to destroy all the Amalekites. Remember, Saul went in and he saw that there were some good things there. And so he kept them. He said, but, 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 but. And the prophet Samuel came to Saul and said, Saul, didn't God talk, tell you to annihilate everything? Uh, but, but, but you kept the best thing. And what is that bleeding of sheep? That, but, but, but these are great sheep. I, I can offer them to God as a sacrifice. You see, what we in our life deal with very flimsily, amen, uh, in our family and in the next generation of the church, uh, they're going to just take advantage of that situation. So it's important this morning that we in our lives destroy sin and we destroy worldliness or it's going to affect our family somewhere. It's going to affect the church somewhere down the line. And so Saul, if he would have destroyed the Amalekites, David would have never been in the situation that he is presently in. Amen. It's time to destroy the enemy and be restored in Jesus Christ. So the trouble in Ziglag all came from Saul. So now David's being uh, heckled because of this, because, because of, uh, uh, of what Saul should have done. And he's facing discouragement. Can I speak to moms and dads for a moment, grandma and grandpas? If we will get the victory in areas of our life, the next generation will have to face it. We've got to destroy it. We've got to let God give us the victory. There's things that will be passed on if we don't destroy it. So here's David. I'm touching on things this morning. Sorry if I'm all over the chart. But I just feel like the Lord's helping us. Here's David. He has 600 men. You read the Word of God, 200 were discouraged and weary and tired. And so David said, I'll take 400 with me. You 200 stay behind. And... Uh, you're too weary and tired to cross the, 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 uh, the brook of the sore. You stay here. In every church, there are going to be those who are weary in the battle. It is not our job to discourage them or criticize them. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Every church Amen. is going to have those who are weary and tired in the battle. 
Our responsibility is to encourage them and allow them to rest. Let them rest. Let them rest in the Lord and wait. I'm not saying they're not going to ever have to pick up because they are going to have to pick up. They need to rest. Amen. So if you're part of that crowd this morning, you need to rest in the things of God. And if we as a church see those who are too weary to fight the battle, we need to strengthen them and encourage them and fight the battle for them until they're rested and restored that they can get back in battle. And so here it is. The Bible says that, that, that two of them were left behind. Amen. It was just too much to force them to mark the zig line. Uh, uh, they could not keep the pace without getting weary. They had to deal with their own grief and their own loss. And so there they are. They're dealing with all that. And so David says, come on, uh, let's take the rest and let's go fight the battle. However, you find that David was pretty weary himself. He was really tired. It's been three days since he's eaten or he's drank any, any, anything. And so the Bible says that they come up on uh, an Egyptian. What's this Egyptian doing? Well, he had been a slave and he had been sick. And they left him for dead. Uh, but he gave food to David and he encouraged him. Sometimes we just need to nourish ourselves. Give me from the Word of God. Give me from the Spirit of God. I need to nourish myself for this battle. And so here he is nourishing himself. And the Bible says uh, that the slaves said, listen, I will tell you where the Amalekites are if you promise not to kill me. David said, we won't kill you. Uh, we'll take care of you. Amen. Uh, our responsibility is about taking care of people. And so the Word of God says that here it was uh, that uh, David was encouraged. He found support for his weariness. He gave uh, encouragement, support to those who were too weary to fight the battle. So David and 400 of, of his men pressed and engaged the, the Malachites. And the Bible says that David smote them from twilight even unto the evening of the next day. Wow, that's a long time. Amen. I'm not talking, Sister Tina, about an hour or two hour battle. But what I'm talking about, an hour of battle that stretches over 24 hours. Here they are fighting. Hey, hey, but, but David knew this. David knew that God has already promised me the victory. Listen, before you engage in any of your battles of life, God didn't promise that they were short. And God didn't promise that they weren't going to take any effort from you. But God did promise that if He called you to the battle, He's going to engage you and equip you with that. May I jump back? Because I forgot to say something that's really important. Mr. Dan, when he, was, he came to Ziegler and Sister Stacy, he came and he saw Brother Eli, that it was all burned and his family was gone. God was out to get him. God is what grieves his heart to woo him. Hello. Hello. Amen. The things that may grieve your heart, God's not out to get you. But God loves you. He's willing you unto him that he may restore you. Amen. So here it is that David and his 400 men uh, uh, go and they fight. I need to tell you, a church isn't built in a day. The man of God, the woman of God won't be built in a day. The prayer warrior won't be built in a day. Amen. It takes more than just a little stress fracture uh, uh, for a little stress fracture, little stress fracture to heal in 24 hours. You got to take care of it. God wants to, in time, take care of us. See, Pentecost happened over a period of time. Go, wait, tarry in the upper room. The Bible says that as they were ter they're tarrying, they were waiting, they were praying. They waited, they prayed, they tarried some more. They prayed some more, they tarried. Then all of a sudden, the sound like a mighty rushing wind began to flow into the room. Amen. They went, but they won't. We want Pentecost. We want a move of God. It's going to take some waiting on God. We want some restoration in our life. It's going to take hearing from God and following the orders of God, engaging in the battle, not expecting it to happen in a snap of a finger, but trusting God to work and to move. Micah said, Rejoice not against me, all my enemy, when I fall. 
He said, I, I, I shall arise. I'm not going to stay down, but I'm, I shall arise. Amen. David, he arose and he began to recover. Difficulties, they weren't suddenly left in the dust. The tears of defeat weren't suddenly turned into a song of victory. Uh, uh, it took some time. Amen. But as time happened, the tears were gone. The song of victory began to happen. I want you to know that God knows how to turn situations around. I believe this morning right here in the sanctuary, God wants us to do some restoring. Some restoring of our soul. Some restoring of our joy. Some restoring of our victory, some restoring of our peace, some restoring of our prayer life, some restoring of our Bible reading life, some restoring of our attendance to church, some restoring of our pressing into the things of God. Amen. God wants to restore. Amen. And I believe that just as David heard from, uh, from the high priest, you're hearing from the Word of God this morning that God wants to bring restoration. Now you've got to move ahead because God's given you a green light. Move into restoration. God's able to restore. Let me share with you a few things. You remember the man of Gadara who sat naked among the tombs because the enemy brother Wall had just messed with his mind, had control over his, his life? One day Jesus passed by, Brother Caleb, touched that man, delivered him from the bondage he was in. Sister Jane, everybody around said, is that the same man? He's clothed, Sister Jane, Sister Rachel, and he's talking, and in his right mind, God is a God of restoration. Maybe other people counted him out and said, man, he needs to go to the local psychiatric institute. He needs some Tylenol. He needs some therapy. He needs some, to put him away. That's an old man of God of restoration. I'll restore him 100%. What about the woman at the well? You know, she was coming to draw water when no one else came because of her life of against. It was an embarrassment. I mean, she lived a, a life that, that Sister Dietrich, people went fun on. The morals, the way she lived, the way she would allow herself to be treated by, by men, the situation she was in. But Jesus told her, go. I'm talking to the restoration. How about that of Job, who we find him and he feels like he's lost. He feels like uh, 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 he's lost everything. And the clothes upon his back, his health, his children. I mean, just everything has gone from bad to worse. The situation, the Bible says, but Job, though he did not see God, he still worshiped. His worship was this. It's, God, I need you to restore. I need you to restore. His friends came and they were so overwhelmed by all the loss that Job had. They sat there for a whole week without saying a word. That's pretty crazy. For this, we'd be lucky if someone said a whole hour without telling us, you're, you're nuts, you might as well give up. You, 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 you might as well go apply for public assistance. You might you, you might as well just, there's no help for you. And you still love God. No, but his friends came and for a whole week, Chad, they couldn't say a word because they seen the devastation of his life. But Job, he trusted in God and he worshiped God. And his worship was this. I believe that God can recover. I believe God can give me recovery, so I will pursue and I will overtake that God may restore me. Listen this morning. The story of David at Ziggurat brings so many opportunities to us because God sees more than what we see. God seen that Ziggurat was burned. God seen that the children and the wives were carried away. But God also saw it was an opportunity to bring David to what he needed to be. Because he was not in a place with God where he should have been. This morning, your crisis, 
your situation is an opportunity for your faith to be restored. God doesn't bring you here to grievous places because God just enjoys seeing you suffer. I don't know. God brings you to these places that you may seek Him again. So this morning, he said, you will give me your own thoughts and your own ability. I don't say, God, I'm stopping.